Hello and welcome to Marketing91.com. According to Keynes, a trade cycle is composed of periods of good trade characterized by rising prices and low unemployment percentages, alternating with periods of bad trade characterized by falling prices and high unemployment percentages. Its characteristics are recession and expansion. These are the two main phases of a trade cycle. Trough refers to the turning point where economic activity is at its lowest. Peak is the upper turning point where the level of economic activity is at its highest. Recession or contraction refers to a downturn in a trade cycle and is characterized by declining economic activity. Expansion follows recession and is characterized by rising economic activity. Features of a trade cycle are Fluctuations in aggregate economic activity. Fluctuations involve changes in many variables such as GDP, employment, investment, profits and financial variables. Expansions and contractions. Trade cycles are accompanied by expansions and contractions. During expansions, there is increase in consumption, production and real GDP, employment, prices, profits, demand for credit and stock prices, while during contraction, there is a decrease in these factors. Peak donates the end of expansion and the beginning of recession. Trough denotes the end of a contractionary phase and is the turning point where the economic activity is at its lowest. Co-movement of variables refers to the tendency of many economic variables to move together in a predictable manner over the term of a business cycle. Business cycles are recurrent but not periodic because they occur at irregular, unpredictable intervals and do not last for a fixed period. Now let's understand the phases of trade cycles. A complete cycle is measured from peak to peak or trough to trough. The four phases of the trade cycle are depression, recovery, prosperity and recession. The first phase is depression. Features of depression are fall in volume of output and trade, fall in income and rise in unemployment, decline in consumption and demand, decline in interest rate, deflation, contraction of bank credit, overall business pessimism and fall in marginal efficiency of capital or MEC and investment. Factors reversing the process of depression are Producers may offer jobs to workers anticipating a better future. Consumers may start purchasing postponed consumption items. Banks and private investors may start investing in securities and bonds from the excess accumulated liquidity. Further, monetary and fiscal policies may lead to recovery. Let's look at an example of the depression phase. The Great Depression from 1929 to 1939. During the Great Depression of 1929, stock markets crashed worldwide and the banking sector of the US collapsed. This triggered a global downturn including a second minor recession in the US, the recession of 1937. Next is the recovery phase. Features of recovery phase are Turning point from depression to expansion Signs of expansion and rising economic activity Rise in demand resulting in increased production and a subsequent increase in investment. Increase in business confidence and optimism, which in turn increases investments. Expansion of banks' credit and businesses leading to the heightened activity in stock markets. Increase in employment, production, income and aggregate demand, prices and profits resulting in business expansion. Gradual transformation of revival to prosperity and repetition of the business cycle. The next phase is prosperity phase. Its features are high level of output and trade, high level of effective demand, high level of income and employment, rising interest rates, inflation, large expansion of bank credit, overall business optimism and high level of MEC and investment. Characteristics of prosperity phase are Full employment of resources leading to the maximum level of production and a rise in gross national product or GNP. Rise in prices and profiles owing to a high level of economic activity. Upswing in the economic activity with economy reaching its peak. Peak point characterized by stagnation in demand, 
The peak point is the beginning of the upper turning point when the economy enters the recessionary phase. Features of recession are Turning point from prosperity to depression Slowdown in economic activity Fall in demand resulting in overproduction and withdrawal of future investment plans Steady decline in output, income, employment, prices and profits Loss of business confidence and rise in pessimism which reduces investment Credit contraction due to greater liquidity needs of banks and individuals Interruption of business expansion and slowdown of stock markets and increase in unemployment resulting in a sharp decline in income and aggregate demand. An example of recession is the Great Recession of 2008 and 2009. On September 15, 2008, the world witnessed the collapse of one of the largest investment banks, Lehman Brothers. Over the next few months, the US stock market plummeted, liquidity dried up and even successful companies laid off thousands of employees. Moving on, let's understand the factors and theories responsible for the trade cycles. The first is monetary factors or monetary theory. These factors deal with money expansion and contraction. During money contraction, demand falls and the rate of interest increases, leading to decreased borrowings. During money expansion, demand rises and rate of interest decreases, which leads to increased borrowings. Criticism Trade cycles are not purely a monetary phenomenon, but a worldwide phenomenon. Next is rise or fall in investment, or the Keynes theory. According to Keynes, trade cycles arise mainly due to a cyclical change in the MEC. When the MEC is high, the rate of investment, income, employment and output are high, and when the MEC is low, the opposite is true. Next is innovation and productivity theory. Innovations or productivity shocks in one sector can spread to the rest of the economy and can cause business fluctuations. Innovation leads to more production which ultimately increases aggregate demand and further increases business income. Criticism Banks are not the only source of finance for every innovation in business. Many times profits are ploughed back to finance innovations. Innovations cannot be the sole cause for the occurrence of a business cycle. Next is interaction between multiplier and accelerator forces, the multiplier-accelerator model. This model states that the interaction of multiplier and accelerator forces can lead to the occurrence of business cycles. According to the supply shocks theory, trade cycles are caused by shifts in aggregate supply. Next is political theory. This theory states that when any type of administration is elected, it initially adopts a policy to reduce inflation and gain a reputation for economic competence. Later, it adopts an expansionary policy in the lead-up to the next election, hoping to simultaneously achieve both low inflation and low unemployment on election day. The last factor is movements in prices and wages, or the equilibrium business cycle theory. This theory attributes business cycle fluctuations to price and wage movements, resulting in cycles of varying output and employment. The two most widely used tools to achieve economic stability are the monetary policy and the fiscal policy. Let's understand control of trade cycles using monetary policy. Business cycles are aggravated by monetary factors. The central bank uses various instruments to reduce the money supply during an expansionary phase when the level of price is rising and vice versa. The various tools used by the central bank are Bank rate open market operations, statutory liquidity ratio or SLR and cash reserve ratio or CRR, selective credit control etc. Monetary policy may not be very effective during depression because of the low MEC and liquidity trap. Moreover, the results are not immediate because of time lag. Lastly, let's understand control of trade cycles using monetary policy. Fiscal policy helps overcome wide business fluctuations through taxation and public expenditure. It operates as a compensatory policy which keeps the economy close to its full employment level. During a depression, fiscal policy is used to stimulate aggregate demand and decrease aggregate demand during an inflationary phase. 
automatic stabilizers, personal income tax, public expenditure and social security measures which are a part of fiscal policy operate as automatic stabilizers. Progressive personal income tax. This helps control or reduces aggregate demand during expansion. Public expenditure directed to productive areas. Public expenditure can generate employment, increase output and aggregate demand during depression. Social security payments. These payments serve as a stable income to a specific group of individuals during prosperity and depression. Thank you.